welcome back to more movie plots and spoilers ahead. In 1962 when nuclear tension between America and the Soviet Union is at an all-time high, eccentric scientist Dr. Calvin Weber is holding a party for his friends and family. Calvin was a brilliant scientist back in the day and began inventing, he retired rich with his pregnant wife Helen and have been living the dream ever since. He boasts to his friends about having the most complete baseball card collection around, Ooh boy. when being informed that Kennedy is on television addressing the nation of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Worried over nothing, Calvin sends his guests home and begins stressing out over the news, when hearing the sound of a jet engine flying overhead. He takes Helen in a casserole and heads into the shed, revealing that he has built a secret fallout shelter beneath his property. They go inside where he has built a near replica of their house, and plan to spend the night there just to be sure. When suddenly an unexpected failure aboard an F-86 Sabre flying overhead causes the pilot to eject. The jet plummets to the ground and crashes directly on top of their house, incinerating the entire shed. Calvin assumes the worst when reading that the indicators on the surface are going haywire, and activates the shelter's time locks. He insists that any life lived above ground after a nuclear fallout is only a half-life, and has set the locks to seal them inside for the next 35 years. With the house now destroyed by the crash, the investigators just assumed that they were crushed inside the shed, as neighbors said they saw the couple spend day and night inside it, though no one knew about what was beneath. Helen begins to get stressed out straight away, while Calvin insists that the place is no different. The two remain strong for the child, and Helen quickly gives birth to a son and names him Adam. The shelter contains everything they could need inside, they use fish farms to grow fresh dinners, a grocery store containing all the food they could want, and a hardware store containing anything Calvin needs to continue his inventions. Adam is educated to a high standard from a young age by his father, who promises his child that he will visit the surface one day and find a nice woman to marry, while Helen worries about making him promises they can't keep. Back on the surface, their land has been sold off to make way for commercialism, with construction workers noticing the shelter and just assuming it's a septic tank. Three years later and mom's malt shop is now a thriving business, fronted by new staff member Melker who has been hired by the sweet mom for a buck fifteen an hour. Adam grows up on 1950s pop culture with his father while Helen begins to retreat into a bottle from madness. He learns how to box from his father, and to dance from his mother, while spending a lot of his days watching his parents' expression of love for one another and wanting to find someone for himself. Ten years later, and Melker has no clue where his life has gone standing in what's now a BYO pizzeria with a miserable mom handing out beer. After Melker discovers that he enjoys Barry White, we go back below where a now 13 years old Adam is becoming fluent in several languages including Latin and French, and is told by his father that he has a great sense of humor, although no one ever found Calvin's jokes very funny. Adam is raised on the teachings that manners are our way to show people that we respect them, and that ladies and gentlemen are people who make others around them feel as comfortable as possible. He attempts to teach his son baseball throughout the years and passes down his valuable card collection. While above ground we see that it is now 1991, and mom's diner has turned into a punk club named Purgatory. With the suburban neighborhood having deteriorated over the decades into an inner city ghetto, mom decides to sell the bar to Melker, who after all these years, finally becomes master of all that he surveys. Another four years pass and a 33-year-old Adam learns what roller skates are while lamenting to his parents that he will miss the place when he finally leaves in two years' time to search the wastelands for a girl, but Helen can't wait to get out having never taken to living underground. The shelter is on its last legs in 1997 and finally unlocks. They find that the elevator is working, so Calvin makes plans to wait until nightfall then check if the coast is clear, while Adam learns his first swear word when Helen says shit, but she tells him it is French. Melker is now an alcoholic living in the diner's condemned remains, and is present when Calvin bursts through the floor in his radiation suit. Having just been asking God for a sign he passes out in shock, and Calvin mistakes the now blighted neighborhood for a post-apocalyptic wasteland. He meets a local working girl who says she can be either a boy or a girl for him, then has a gun pointed at him and runs into an adult shop, being terrified by it even more than the gun. Calvin believes the planet is now full of irradiated mutants, and returns to tell the family that he has decided they must stay underground for protection. Helen objects, who unlike Calvin who enjoys the seclusion and Adam who knows nothing else, has been having a hard time. Calvin suddenly falls ill, requiring Adam to leave the shelter for the first time in search of medical supplies. Mom gives Adam a shopping list of items that they will need to survive, and tells him to look for a girl who isn't a mutant to bring home. Calvin agrees with this and hopes he finds a healthy girl, but tells him to stay away from the adult store telling him that it's filled with poison gas. Melker has now built a shrine to his new gods, and immediately begins to worship Adam when he shows up, 
asking for forgiveness for wasting his life before spending the rest of it praying to a candle. The caveman exits the building to see the sky for the first time ever, but begins to freak the public out as he marvels at the world around him, and warns everyone away from the adult store for their own safety. Catching the local transport, as advised by his mother, Adam gets directions to a convenience store by a nervous man who can't stand his irritating questions. Adam purchases supplies, but while talking to a butcher about the foreign notion of frozen seafood, having grown up eating nothing but fresh fish, it occurs to him that he can't remember his way home. After spending all night searching, Adam goes into a nearby pawn shop trying to sell his father's baseball cards for some quick cash. The store owner recognizes Adam's ignorance and offers him 500 bucks for the whole box, while Adam is simply unaware of the value of money in general and is ecstatic. That would be wonderful. A staff member named Eve Rustikov points out to him that a single one of his cards is worth six grand. Getting her fired from her job and Adam instantly forming an attraction to her, she gives him directions to a holiday inn, and a bus stop insisting that you never drive strangers yourself, but quickly changes her tune when he offers her a $4,000 baseball card. The longer Adam talks to Eve in the car the quicker she begins to speed towards the hotel, and can't get away quick enough once she gets her payment. He checks into the hotel with a Yogi Berra but tips the bellboy with cash, being told that he looks 25 not 30 and accrediting it to living below ground, as well as that being the reason for his fear of heights. The next morning Eve's returned out of guilt and gives Adam his card back, and she can tell he likes her when he begins asking her about her ex-boyfriends. She tells him that it never works out while Adam follows her around like a lost puppy, until he eventually offers her a job. Needing help to collect supplies for his parents but not saying who it's for, Eve just assumes by the amount that it must be for a shelter and requests $1,000 a week, which he accepts. After a while of collecting strange items like yacht batteries and tobacco tins, Eve suspects that it isn't for starving children. Adam continues to try court Eve but she keeps rejecting him, so he asks her to help him find a wife who is not a mutant, which she just assumes he means not ugly. He requests that the girl be from Pasadena as per his mother's advice and that it be within two weeks, but Eve tells him that she could only get him knocking boots in that amount of time. Adam still prays over every meal that he eats, knowing no other way, and is let try drive by Eve but almost kills them on the way back to her place. Adam meets Eve's ex-boyfriend Cliff clearing out his things, while inside meets her gay housemate and best friend Troy who suspects that the supplies he's gatherings for a self-sustained island off South America, or possibly a cult. Adam has an appreciation for ceilings having never had them growing up, and drinks champagne cocktails as that's what his mother does, but is told by Eve that only hookers drink them. Eve claims to be psychic ever since getting rear-ended in Palm Springs, and predicts that Adam is from Alaska. Not wanting to tell her the truth he says yes, then proceeds to answer correctly every question Troy quizzes him on having been well-educated on its geography. While drunk one night, Helen attempts to investigate the outside world in secret, but meets Melker who is now preaching to a full congregation. Looking like a Rob Zombie concert she retreats back inside. Adam spends the next two weeks with Eve and Troy enjoying everything for the first time, he gets to see the ocean as well as comprehend baseball finally, having needed to see it to understand. While sitting out in the rain, Eve attempts to convince him out of going wife hunting, saying that the notion is ridiculous and that a girlfriend is the best to hope for. After Troy and Eve provide him with a fashion makeover, they take Adam to a 1940s-style nightclub to find him a girl, giving him dating advice and sending him into the crowd. Adam attracts the attention of a few undesirables but Eve steers him away from them. She then directs him to lie to women with the intent of sabotaging his chances out of jealousy, but everyone Adam talks to just finds him a delight to be around. After a dance number with two women where Adam shows off his years of training, Eve wakes up to the fact that he can't be from Alaska and confronts him to tell her the truth about the supplies. Before Adam has a chance, Cliff shows up and tries to steal Eve away. Adam interjects but Cliff throws a punch so Adam counters it, demonstrating his years of training with his father. Adam then beats Cliff to the punch two more times before he gets the picture, and Eve leaves the club that night alone. Troy returns home later and helps Eve realize that she is in love with Adam. He then explains that Adam went home with the woman that Eve steered him clear of and she gets angry. Before she can get in her car to stop it Adam returns and startles her, causing her to hurt her knee falling over. Inside the house Adam is told by Troy that Eve needs a man not a boy, so he begins to act assertive and applies the first aid himself, calling Eve a baby when she winces at the pain. He explains that he politely rejected Sophie's advances as he could only think about Eve. They lean in and kiss, but Adam admits that he is still a virgin and breaks down the entire truth about his past. Telling her that the fallout shelter was built in secret with contractors from out of state, and of his desire to take her underground to be his wife. Understandably she asks him to leave. The next day Adam drives past the adult store and locates the pub, where Melker is begging for a sign from his gods when Adam grants his wish. 
Adam returns to Eve's house to tell her the good news but she is waiting with a psychiatrist to have him committed, having not believed his story. Adam begs them to let him just go home, but eventually cooperates with them as Eve says it's what's best, but he escapes. Eve denies the psychiatrist the chance to call the police and Adam leaves her his room key, while taking the supplies back to his parents, destroying the doctor's car on his way out and causing a fight to break out between them. Adam returns home to Calvin and Helen for the first time in two weeks, and has Melker and his cult load supplies into the shelter for them. While the troglodytes are told by the cult leader that it's a horrible state up above. There's something on your forehead. I know. Eve and Troy go to his hotel room in hopes of finding clues to his whereabouts. They find amongst it toiletries and clothing from the 1960s, and stock certificates in companies like IBM which Calvin had deemed worthless and given to Adam. Troy calls up his friend and confirms that they would now be worth millions, and deduces that Adam is not crazy and was telling the truth the whole time. And that Eve met the kindest most polite incredibly rich guy she has ever met, and had him committed. Adam leaves a message for Eve on her machine, missing her as she has gone with Troy back to the adult store to look around for the entrance to the shelter. Having nothing more to go on other than Adam's joy at the sight of the place, they leave, and Eve looks on at the degraded neighborhood having once been cute little homes with orchards back in the 60s. Suddenly she spots Adam outside the cultist bar returning from leaving the message on her phone, and they embrace. Calvin now prepares to seal his family inside once again, when Adam arrives to introduce his parents to his new girlfriend. Impressed with Eve after she tells them the lie that she is from Pasadena, Calvin and Helen host a guest for the first time in over 35 years. They agree to Adam's terms of setting the shelter's locks for two months, while Adam and Eve stay above ground and make arrangements. They sell the stocks to build his parents a new home in the country, and after convincing Melker that Adam is not God they help him rebuild the pub into a Fallout-themed nightclub. Adam purchases and restores a red 1960 Cadillac convertible, and reveals to his parents he has rebuilt their home identical to the one that was destroyed, though with all the new amenities such as a microwave. Though Calvin doesn't see much of a difference between the new home and the shelter, Helen sees a massive one. This is different. Calvin gets nervous when he hears that Eve's last name is Rustikov, but Adam reveals that there was never an atomic war and that the Soviet Union collapsed without a single shot being fired. That the bomb was not a bomb and instead was a plane that had crashed into their house. Calvin is humored by the notion that the commies would just lay down their weapons and surrender, believing it to have just been a ploy by the Russians to garner aid for more nefarious reasons still to come. So he begins to plan out a new fallout shelter, as Eve watches through the window while playing with her new engagement ring. And the movie ends. Eve, can I skate around your block? Can you skate around your block? No. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. <laughs>